Disclaimer, this video may age very quickly. I saw this short film that was created using an early version of an AI application called Sora. Look it up. It opened my eyes as to where we are today with AI storytelling. As a screenwriter, let's say that I was mildly concerned. So I reached out to Orange Fed, who had shared that video. Oren is a writer, speaker, game designer, creative director, and AI expert. We talked about how human an AI can be, how filmmaking jobs are suffering right now, and how the quality of AI writing will skyrocket over the next year or two. My first question was, what is AI's impact on filmmaking in general? First of all, okay, it's a democratization of the ability to even become a filmmaker. And given that it's, it's sort of like this, you know, this huge equalizer, a lot of people who had like no ability or no, you know, they never try to even think about becoming filmmakers will be able to become filmmakers and indie filmmakers will get to do really much higher quality stuff. But the thing is with equalizing is, okay, yeah, you're pulling up everyone in the bottom, but you will also definitely will take down those on top because AI right now can improve productivity by about 50%. I, let's say it's about 50%. Every screenwriter, every, like, like I said, editor or visual effects artist, any one of these can produce 50% more. But that's, again, that's just right now. If we wait a year, if we wait two, it'll jump to two times more and then four times more. What does that mean? If you look at it from a, a pure, you know, cold capitalist way of thinking about it, yeah, sure, we can produce four times more or we can just do the same thing. It would just cost us a quarter of the salaries, which if you ask me, you know, production companies and producers, they won't want to start making, you know, like $20 billion movies. No, actually, uh, the, the budget will go down because they'll have to hire less people. So obviously, that's a huge selling point for them, for for the people paying, paying the salaries. Right now, it's just, oh, okay, an AI can do your job? Okay, great, I'll fire basically everyone in the writer's room except for one writer and then you just sit on your chat gpt and just churn out whatever for me when chat gpt was launched in november 23 i i saw that i was a, a big deal but i was sort of taking a step back and you know i kept uh, observing it but it was not until i saw sora that i decided right. i need to talk to you when I saw Sora, I agree completely. This was a game changer. This was, you know, like this was a huge leap forward. We're, we're now going to be able to shortcut a whole part of the process. We're creating these documents called screenplays that are written in a particular format that was yeah. developed because there's a crew who needs to work with this material. It seems to me that that crew will dwindle over time and there may not be much left except for the key creatives, which to me seems like an inevitable path to the disappearance of this screenplay format that we know. And I then wonder, you know, should we all be more like directors? Our screenwriters, will, will we become the directors because we'll have direct access to these machines? Yeah, I feel I feel like you really hit the nail on the head in in describing it like that. My book was, as I call it, AI enhanced because I, I used AI to write the part of the dialogue that the AI was was saying. If the AI in the book and later the script was talking to a human, I wrote the human part, and whenever the AI had to respond, I let the AI respond, and I just let it. You know, if it took it to another direction than what I thought, then I, I, if it was good, then I said, okay, let's, let's go from there. Someone asked me, didn't you, do you still feel like it's your story? And I told them, honestly, yeah, it is because like you said, I felt like I directed it. I feel that this is an important distinction that we will have to face more and more 
and feel like the more this technology advances, and obviously it will advance, uh, this is exactly what, what will guide us. Because we have this, this backpack that we carry with us with everything that we learn, everything that we saw, everything that we experienced. And we, we take it out whenever we need to. And we, we use it to remind us of things that we saw before and made an impact on us or made us feel a certain way. This will eventually be more and more of the process. And I think that we need to just have like this mental shift and just realize that it's okay. And this is like, just like the next step, just like it was okay that we sketched with a pencil and a, a pad. And then we said, okay, you know what? It's okay that I'm sketching with a stylus now and I can just hit control Z and undo. And I can do things that, hey, that I can't do by hand. And it's okay because I have this tool now that enables me to do it. Obviously, you know, there will be purists who will say, no, you can't do that. And there'll be people who will keep saying uh, AI is ruining everything. But th this is happening. A and all of the, the tech giants are also saying the same thing. This is happening because there's no way that this isn't going to happen. The only thing that's left for us to do is to adjust and evolve and see where we make our impact with that. It's anticipated that the AI will feed its own work in there and you have that in a, f a feedback loop that's loop, where yeah. you would expect some sort of lowest common denominator rather than you know our our deepest humanity. The, the other side of the debate is that AI is smart, that it knows better than we do what humanity is. It will know our flaws and, and unconscious machinations more than we do. And therefore, it will be capable of continually even improving on called artistic uh, endeavors. What's your opinion in that? I think we will hit the first part of what you said, the feedback loop part, and it'll get really bad. But then we'll get to the second part. Well, it will get just like insanely good. I, and I agree completely. I, I mean, it can be it, it could be a huge problem, but I'm totally seeing how uh, it can be circumvented. Right now, the thing with, with AI is that it's really, really poor at being a critic. Because let's take this very simple experiment. But you open up Photoshop or whatever, MS Paint, could be whatever, and just scribble a few lines anyway, with a few colors and something. You save it, you upload it to ChatGPT, and you write, hey, I just drew this picture and I'm very excited about it. What do you think? 100% without fail, any, every AI will tell you the same thing. This is amazing. This is, you're passionate with your art. I love it. It's just, it's the greatest. And obviously because that's the way the algorithm is tuned. And not because it actually thinks it's great. With writing, it's a problem. Writing is very qualitative. It's not quantitative. It's really hard, and I'm trying to, to figure it out right now because I'm working a lot with, with these problems. It, it's really hard for it right now to understand what's quality writing and what's not quality writing. If you just say, okay, I want to write this scene about a guy who meets this girl at a bus stop and whatever, write it for me. It'll be kind of ridiculous. It'll be like the first week of a, of a writing student. And that's just a problem because it doesn't know how to, how to say this one is better than that one. Texty Music just made also a few really, really impressive leaps forward with the Suno and then the Udio. And someone asked me a few days ago, how come it, it makes, how come the music is great? It, 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 how is the music much better than the writing? And I told, and I told her, well, that's because music has very, very specific rules. If you talk about harmony, then you know that, okay, if you do, you know, a, a C, 
the C major and then you go to F and then you, there's progressions and a harmony and there's just these rules that are very easy to follow. And with, with writing, the rules that are very easy to follow is grammar and spelling. Grammar and spelling, it'll do great. 100% without fail. But writing is obviously much more than that. Right now, it's having a really hard time. And I'm really uh, emphasizing right now because I'm sure that this is just a hurdle that it will overcome in uh, probably just uh, less than a year. What's your take on the, the legal aspects? Well, legal slash moral, because obviously there are there are quite some voices that say we as writers, we should just not embrace it. We should not go there because it's wrong. We're essentially using the creative work from all these anonymous writers whose work ended up in the in the body, in the data set. And we're basically accomplices to theft. What's, what's your view on that? I'm really not the person to ask. I can say my opinions, but the legal aspect of it is insanely complicated and convoluted. And whenever I talk to lawyers who deal with these things, they just say, we don't know what's going to happen. It's insane and it's going to change everything. No matter which direction it takes, it's going to change everything. Even if, you know, if, if they decide that, okay, it'll be much stricter or if everyone can do whatever they want, it, regardless of that outcome, it'll be, uh, it'll be huge and it'll change everything in the legal sense. That's one part of it. The moral part of it is also a tricky one because again, it's, it's, a, it's a real gray area. And I agree, by the way, I agree with both sides. I agree that it's a problem if you say, okay, I want to, you know, uh, take everything that Karel wrote and just feed it into my fine tune, my model and feed it into my model. And then I'll just tell my AI, okay, from now on, you're copying Karel. You're doing, you're writing exactly like he writes and we'll just, you know, I, I like his voice. Let's just go with that. Obviously, I agree that's a real problem, and morally, I I find it, it especially problematic. But if you look at a broader sense, I mean, the problem that most people have when they approach AI and generative AI is that they're saying, "Oh, it's 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 a theft, and it's it's soulless, and it's just a machine talking. It it lacks." the human spirit and the human whatever. I disagree with that part completely. First of all, because it disregards completely the fact that everything that's in the data set is human. Right now, at least. I'm putting aside that note that you said about the feedback loop. Right now, it's still, still not an issue. Right now, everything that's inside it is human. I did like this, this art project, I called it us as a single voice, because the way I saw it is that the, this whole data set is essentially us, it's humanity as a single voice. What I did was I asked it, okay, tell me what you think about grief. Tell me what you think about human connection. Tell me what you think about all these very, very human things that are just inside the very core of being human. And I asked it, what do you think about it? What can you say about it? And the way I looked at it was it, what it's saying is actually, it's saying what we think about it, us, every one of us as a single voice. I think by the way, when you, when you give it like, again, really, really specific things, I think Mm. it does a good job when I told it about grief and told it, okay, talk about grief, talk, talk about what it actually means as a human to grieve. It was extremely human. It was eerily human. In the second and final part of our chat, Oren explains how the screenwriter, as we know today, will likely become obsolete in about five phases. He shows us an experiment he did with the work of Stanley Kubrick, and together we watch five minutes of an AI-generated TV episode 
of a show that you know very well and that I found frighteningly convincing. So while screenwriting is still a job, check out our videos about story, script and sales. And to improve your own writing skills instantly, consider our immersion training courses. Happy watching, happy writing. Cheers.